Okay. All right. Let's go on production today. That's okay. Good day, Dr. Candace. Good morning. Good morning, Dr. T. That's okay. They just know that this is a live show and sometimes we're going to have some type of difficulty. That's okay. That's okay. We get it in and it all works out. How are you this morning? Well, this afternoon in Philly. Girl, afternoon. I'm good. I'm good. It was a, a yeah. I was. I did something a little tricky with this platform, and so I was just like, okay, did I make the wrong mistake by doing something tricky? <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. so I think we. I think we're good. I think we're okay. good. We better be live. Look, I'm going to check in a minute from one of these phones. Make sure we live. We but, are. We are definitely oh, live. Oh, yeah. cool. Awesome. Awesome sauce. All righty. So how was your week? It was good. It, it This week was so much better. I don't know if you remember me telling you last week was the last week was a little difficult. This week was so much better and it was good. The weather was good. It's a little chilly now. So it's sweater season, as everyone can see. Shout out to all the sweater wearers. I see you got your sweater on, too, because it's, it's a little chilly. Uh, right on. Absolutely. So it, it was a good week. I, I had a really good week. I have one more week to go before my vacation. So I'm excited. I cannot wait because I need it. Mm-hmm. I need it. Y'all know I'm vacation queen. And you know what? Speaking of that, I wish the world could be like that, that we all work. Okay. Maybe not all of us, because some of us kind of need to stay where they stay put because due to behavior issues. Mm-hmm. However, it will be so good for everybody to be able to work really hard for 90 days and two weeks off. Work 90 days and two weeks off. Wouldn't that be amazing? That would be awesome. I love it. We would all love it. I, I love it. So I'm excited and I'm ready for that. How was your week? My week was good. Believe it or not, I did more this week than I've done in a long time. Oh. Yeah, I mean, you know you know how you and I talk and I've mm-hmm. been pretty much in the house and You know, not really in the house like that, y'all. I'm working. But the thing is, is like when you work for yourself and um, in, you know, work for yourself and you're working from home, it's kind of hard to um, put, you know, to to find like to want to go out once the evening comes. Right. And so it's like time of day comes out and it's just like, okay, do I go out? Do I stay in the house? What do I do? What do I do? And so I find myself staying in a house a lot more than what I used to. Now, in my past, I was a five to six event person every week. Oh, I mean, not every week. Yeah. I would go, yeah, between five to 10 events a week, between Monday okay. and Sunday, right? Within okay. the seven day span. And this would be consistent every, every week, right? Mm-hmm. And this is before the pandemic. Um, after the pandemic, I was just like, well, well, we still in the pandemic. Okay, let me let me scratch that piece, right? Right. <laughs> thing. I made my decision that I'm not going to, you know, do go as hard as I once did in the past in regards mm-hmm. to going to everything. So now I'm like selective on stuff that I want to go to, you know. And so it's like the holiday season, and I get emails and evites and all that stuff all the time. But I just been like, uh, let me just weigh weigh my options out, right? Mm-hmm. So Tuesday, it was a um one of the PR firms sent me an email about attending a nail salon opening. Oh, oh, so, and the, the nail salon is called Resort Nails, and for those that's in the Philadelphia area, is located in Ardmore, Pennsylvania. Uh, yeah, Ardmore, Pennsylvania. So, um, went to that. That was it. Was a really nice event. Um, Tuesday evening. And then on Wednesday, one of my coalition sisters, her birthday was Wednesday. And her and I have been traveling all over, over the past few months. We went to mm-hmm. Vegas, we went to DC, you know, doing oh, wow. a quarantine and stuff. So um, we celebrate a birthday with her. So we went to, oh my God, paint night. Oh, and yeah. I showed you. Yes. Y'all, I like the paint. I'm going to show y'all this awful painting at the end of the night. So I love it. And it was so funny because, Candice, you're going to love this. When I finished my painting, my my, my other coalition sisters came over and they looked. They said, oh, Tyra. I said, what? They said, why your painting look like a man with an afro? It it, it did, but I get it. It, Because isn't it like going up a mountain and trees? 
But it ain't supposed to be a man. It's supposed to be out. I love it. And here they go. It looks like he looking through somebody's soul. You captured somebody's soul. You I did. Said, oh, you need to take his ass on because I'm not doing <laughs> it. I love it, though. I thought it was nice. Yeah. So, but this paint night was different. Like a lot of us, I don't know. Have you ever been to paint night before? I used to uh, host paint and sips. Like oh, I right. have the artist there and he's really nice. His name is Justin and he's local and he's out there with me. And right. I used to get all the women together in my meetups and sit and we go there and we eat and have wine and stuff. And they're painting sips out here. Yes. So you picked the painting. Yes. All right. So this one was a mystery. Oh. You don't pick the painting. Oh, okay. So yeah, I picked the painting for mine. Yeah. So we got there. We know what the hell we was painting. And oh. so when everybody was done, everybody was like, we looked at the birthday girl. We said, this is what you picked. <laughs> right? He's like, what was this? But she didn't pick you, did she? No. Okay. And there was another couple there, you know, and even the woman with that was with the other couple. The woman was like, I don't know what we about to be painting, but it was <laughs> already starting off wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You know, but, but it, it was, was nice. nice. I'll show y'all my horrible artwork possibly at the end of the show. <laughs> it, it was nice. I think it's nice. Are you going to hang it up? Hell no. I was going to hang it outside on the porch. I love it. it I mean, it's, it's very neat. You it think? is neat. Yes. I love it. And it's, it's like a mountain and some trees. Is that what it was? What did the artist say it's supposed to be? She never said it. Now that I think See, y'all didn't it. ask. Y'all didn't ask the lady. It was supposed to be a Christmas theme. Let me go grab yeah. it. Yeah. Entertain the people. I'll go. Yeah, it. well, I liked it. I, I think it was good. I thought it was great. The colors was good. It, it was it was a good painting to me. I, I did. I thought the colors was good. Everything. So yeah, yeah. I, I thought it was really good from the colors to the mount. Look at that. All right, everybody, tell me what y'all think it is. And it's going up. I see the 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 tree. So I see two trees. Scenery, like outdoor scenery. Yes. And. These are the trees. Mm -hmm. The two trees. These was like the Christmas theme. Um, this is supposed to be the sky. Yes, I get that. I didn't get what this was. Oh, I don't know what that is. Because I never okay. see green and trees in the sky. You know what I mean? Like it's not a okay. tree. This is not a tree. Okay. I don't know what it is. But I like it. And then I see the grass or the hill. Is the hills or grass going up? I guess. I, I like it. It's eclectic. It's uh, eccentric art. It can be abstract. Besides, I, we, I noticed the trees. Because abstract art, you got to. And then you know what? The beauty of art is, it's what we think it is. It's what right. the viewer sees. Right. That's the beauty about art. So I, I definitely like it. So in the meantime... Yeah, I think it should be up. Absolutely. So That's meantime, where it should be. <laughs> so in the meantime, we'll sit it right there behind us. Yeah. I was going to turn it backwards. And... No. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> so I love it. That was, the, that was the awesomeness of this week. And so that's what I did this week. I, I love it. I love it. Yeah. So are you ready for Christmas? I'm as ready as ready going to be. How about you? Are you ready? Uh, no, and I'm not going to get ready. I am going to cook and make sure my house is together and clean, and I am ready for the new year. All right, now. There you I'm go. I'm ready for the new year. I, I'm definitely, I'm one of those. No, I'm not a Scrooge or no bug hubbug or anything. Right. It's just that I'm just ready for the new year. I'm, I'm excited about the new year. I will... Uh, I'm going to take what you just said. I'm going to piggyback off you. I'm as ready as I'm going to get. So I want to make sure the family have are taken care of. And yeah, I'm ready for the new year. Yeah. Oh, I'm ready. Yeah. I'm ready. I'm like, oh, yeah, the new year is going to be amazing for me. So I'm ready for the new year. All yes, right. absolutely. And before we move on, how's the weather out there in Philly? Cold. Look. <laughs> do y'all have snow? Hell no, not yet. Thank God. Okay, no, good. Not yet. Ooh, 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 good. But how child. cold? Let um, let me tell you. I think it's about, it might be like, it's 44 degrees right now. Oh, okay. It's 44 degrees outside. Feels like it's 42. The high okay. of the day is 46. 
So, yeah. So I think now, like, we kept going bouncing back and forth the past couple weeks, like last week, too. Kept bouncing back and forth, hitting 60, and then backing it back to 50. So this okay. week, the weather has, this week, I think, has been pretty much consistent. We've been at 54, 52, and ranging between that 50 and 40 mark. And so now I think we're coming into our winter where we're going to stay into this, you know, okay. 40, 40 degree, 40 degree weather mark. You know, I'm okay. glad I decided to change my trip next week. Exactly. They said, they said rain. I'm not doing rain. Yeah. Yeah. And where are you going? I was taking my mom to New York for the day. And we was actually in the night. Uh, next Thursday going into Friday, but she was like, she wasn't really feeling like going like this. She's like, well, can we move the trip? And I said, we can move the trip. Tell me when you want to go. And so she moved, we moved it. Good. We moved I it. think that's awesome. And I said, I, I said, you, I said, all you had to do was say, Tyra, but I'm not feeling it. So we moved yeah. it to the end of the month, you know. Okay, so good. Now we just going to go for a whole day because, you know, I know sometimes, you know, we all, you know, even though people still living like COVID is over, you know, even though we know it's not, you know, I know, you know, a lot of the elderly do get, you know, a little squeamish when thinking about spending the night. Place, I get it. You know Absolutely. what I mean? So I said, I can't do that. You know, we was going to actually spend a night. And so she was, you know, feeling some type of way about it. No, nope, you ain't got to feel no type of way about it. I'll cancel that. <laughs> Save mm -hmm. that four or $500 a night. <laughs> Absolutely, girl. Right on, because as you are in New York, exactly. Now, how far is New York from you? Is is that like across the bridge? It's hour and a half. It's not bad. Hour and a half. Yeah, because yeah. like where we live, I'm in Philadelphia, and so where we're at in Philly, um, it used to take me 15 minutes to get to my job in New Jersey. Okay. You know, and so the only thing that separates us from New Jer New York City is Jersey. So. You know, driving on up, so it don't take us long. You know, it okay. takes an hour and a half to get from Philly to to uh, okay. Manhattan. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's nice. That that is so wonderful. Yeah. So for me, it's the weather out here in Cali is good. It's mm -hmm. like sixty Ooh. into us. Oh yeah, it's sixty all week. So we all got on sweaters and we feel like everybody want to call off school and work because uh -uh. we Cali. I'm a Cali girl, so you I'm like sixty. Out there like that, Candace. Girl, I got boots on, the sweater hat, the heat on for 60 degrees. It's 65, and we feel like, oh, we ain't gonna be able to do this. So, is it yeah. 65 that feel like 65 to feel like 60, or 65 to feel like 55? Or to me, because Baz being I'm a Cali girl, so I we like hot, I like the hot weather, I, I don't prefer the winter at all. So, if it got to 40, I wouldn't be able to go outside. So I know you don't visit the trade off. <laughs> oh no 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 no! And I know I gotta go, and you know, cause my mom and stuff. But I've been looking at them like it's now a California girl, and like yes. I'm not doing them. I cannot, and I know I have to, but I'm looking at them. Should we Facetime? Like it, no. you still see me? Yes, cause that weather, I'm not used to that. Right. I am not. I'm not. I'm not used to that. But yeah. So, yeah. but other than that, I'm happy. I'm good. And the weather is good because I got a lot of sweaters. So yes. that's good. And the sitting by heater, it's a mess. And it's just 65. It's a, right now, I think it's 65. And I ain't even got my heat on. It's 62 in here right now. See? <laughs> yeah, I can't take <laughs> stuff like that. I let my, look, I turn it on later on. I am. I'm sitting here chilling. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But it's I am too funny excited. How, how the body is, though. It is. You know, it it's is. Funny how the body is because it's just like where what's cold to me is not cold to you. Mm -hmm. But you know, but we know, you know, it is a little chill, but it's not like that. But it's is you know, when you think about science in it, you know, is is it's interesting. It is, and because we live on two different climates, so our bodies mm -hmm. are accustomed to certain things. I'm accustomed to the West Coast, and then you're over there, so even if it's snow, Tyra, like, I don't like snow, but I can still do what I need to do. I see snow, and I probably have to be rushed to the hospital. Because I'm like, what's that? I ain't going to be able to do that. <laughs> what what we doing? Why is this white stuff coming out the sky? But look, yeah. and it's, it's so funny because strange things happen. Yeah. So we can never say that it's not going to snow over there because it could. Yeah, because I, I wouldn't be able to take that, even though I come from that. It's just that yeah. I, I've been here so long. I, oh, yeah. I couldn't take it. I couldn't. It's so I funny because I remember last, last year, my friend, one of my besties, she 
she went to Vegas, her and her boyfriend. Mm -hmm. And it's <laughs> her boyfriend is a Cali guy. Okay. And she was like, Tyra, she was like, why it start snowing? I started laughing. And it started snowing in Vegas. And she go, girl, she said, why was we there for it? Why was this fool acting a fool? She said, I had to drive the car. She said, because he yeah. didn't know what to do. <laughs> I, I wouldn't know what to do. I'm like, what is that? I don't know how to drive it. <laughs> I don't. I, it will It would be a mess. It would be a mess. So, yes, I'm a Cali girl, so I just stay in my lane. I said, uh-uh. So, yeah, no, no, that's no, what no, I said. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Absolutely. Yes. But today we have a great show. I am so excited about the show. This show is uh, full with information and just all types of things. This show is full. And this show is today is filled with what everybody can relate to. A lot of people yeah. can relate to what we're having today. But before we get started with our show, Tyra, what are we doing with the tea with Dr. Tyra? Are <laughs> uh, we getting started with that? All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and start talking about the tea. All right, so I don't know what this thing. Look, we having all kinds of crazy malfunctions. <laughs> this is gonna be fixed today, right? Week. All right. So for the tea today, the first thing we're gonna talk about, y'all know my favorite show that I like to get my 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 information from is the woulda coulda shoulda off the Big Tigger Morning Show. Look, I'm going to reach out to them and I'm going to tell them, y'all be getting some good questions. But this story was just like, are you serious? So if y'all didn't see it this week, the woulda, coulda, shoulda was, my husband has been upset because a couple weeks ago, we had a wedding to attend. I was in the bridal party and I sat at the bridal party table. He's really upset because he had to sit with a bunch of people he didn't know and didn't care for. He left the reception and left me there by myself. He's mad at me because he thinks I should have left with him. I was the bridesmaid. What was I supposed to do? So this person wrote in asking the ticket show what to do. Now, I think, you know, for all of us that have been in weddings numerous times, right? Um, first of all, when your mate goes with you to the wedding, you know, they already should know that it's a chance that they may be at a table with people that they don't know and that they might not be seated with with them right but you know one question that i i thought about was for this man to be this this upset by it was it a situation where they got married did did they sit everybody with their spouses you know what I mean? Because that could have been the situation of why. Because I know with a lot of modern weddings now, we do see people leaving the tra non -tra the, the traditional way of doing things where the bridal party sits with the bride and the groom and all of that. And you usually see, you know, the bridal party scattered all over the place, you know, sitting with their loved ones, sitting with this one, that one. And, they, and the chances are they don't know the individuals they sit in with or they sit in with whoever they came with. So, so yeah. So with that being said, sorry, this clock has started talking. But with that being said, you know, for this person to get so um, upset, you know, by it, the idea that he left her, you know, there, it's like, you know, what, you know, what was going through his mind or what was actually happen, happening to make him feel that alone or is it that he felt that entitled yeah my take on that and i totally agree with tyra when she said when you stated dr t that some you know people have gotten or gotten away from the traditional setting however this bride mm -hmm. it was the traditional setting so i'm gonna go on the limb and say this and i'm dead i'm gonna say it on the mental health minute his ass was petty you know damn well that girl was in the bridal party. So when you are in a bridal party, you what you go with the notion. Got to use emotional intelligence. She ain't gonna sit with me during the reception and where y'all dancing and the drinks are flowing and you're having a good time and you celebrating the couple. You go to your woman, y'all dancing and she may come to your table and sit with you. But during pictures and when they first walk in and maybe the eating of the dinner, she's with the bridal party, especially during picture time because you know every wedding is basically about the bride. 
It really is. And we don't want to mess up this woman's wedding because he and his feelings. So I just think he was just being petty. And it makes me think if it wasn't traditional, it was traditional or whatever they had going on prior. He still was wrong because he left her. You shouldn't have left your woman. I don't give a damn what happened. That's my problem. That's the issue. Actually, leaving her is bigger than getting the attitude. I agree. I agree because he should not have left her there like that. He shouldn't have left her. So well, she got to take an Uber in her dress, in her, in her uh, bridesmaid dress. Right. Nor should he have caused a scene. Exactly. You know, and it's like where he might not have thought this was a scene nine times out of ten. This probably was a scene. Absolutely. Probably be like, where your husband go? Where your husband go? Where your husband go? And who wants to hear that the whole day? Exactly. Now the bride is concerned and she's like, girl, what happened to such and such? Oh, he left because I couldn't sit with him. You know, you're putting the bride in a compromising situation as in her feelings because she's probably like, well, whatever, it's my wedding. I don't care. But still, right? She that other woman means something to her because she was up in her wedding party. Yeah. So, of course, concern would come like, well, what happened to such and such? Oh, he left me. Now the bride is feeling bad for her wedding party, right. you know? Yeah, and she shouldn't have wrong. like that for that day. Right, that's yeah. a special day, so she should be able to feel special. Yeah. Feeling like she, you know. Now she got to she gotta have some, I don't know, it just took the view and the eyes off her. Yes. I think he interrupted the whole wedding flow. So I, yes. my opinion, I think he was wrong. He never should have left his wife. And you go with the intent, knowing if someone's in the party, because I was placed in that situation before, and I was not in the wedding party. And he was, and that's okay. I'm sitting there. I'm cute sitting there mad at my business. And I get along with a lot of people. So whether I knew them or not, and I didn't, but I open up and I start talking. Hey, how are you? And that's it. You get in where you fit in. It's just a couple hours. You go, enjoy the wedding, eat. That's it. But you know what? You know what, Dr. Candice? There is so many people out there that are selfish yes. when it comes to relationships. There's a lot of people out there that are super selfish, and a lot of people don't realize that, right? And they, how can I put it? They settle, you know, and they settle for individuals who are selfish like that. If it's not about me, not about my families, I could care less. I don't care is the attitude that a lot of them take. That's not cool. That's not cool, you know, but we see this happen all the time in a lot of relationships. And, you know, and do people think they think it's OK? Mm -hmm. And I think because being in a relationship myself, I think a lot of people, you are certainly uh, absolutely right, are very selfish. And then there's another aspect to that as well. I think when they are not called out enough or called out in the proper way on a BS. Mm -hmm. They continue to be on that hamster wheel and do have that selfish behavior, even though their spouse or their partner don't like it and feel a certain way. But nothing ever gets handled. I think it's forgiven without being rectified. Right. You know how you can forgive bad behavior, mm -hmm. but it wasn't rectified. It wasn't handled. The mm -hmm. best apology is change behavior. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, is it's like, you know, handling it, right? When, you know, when we look at the whole, the whole handling it, right? Is it really handled? Because, you know, when the next event yeah. happens, it's going to be a whole nother situation. So now his ass ain't invited to nothing else. How about that? You know, and it's just, just like, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, because I've seen that happen firsthand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, like you, you just not invited to right. nothing else. <laughs> and then people say, Stop bringing him or they won't invite you because they know he attached to you. Yeah, they do that. They'd be like, girl, I want to invite you. Now you got to find out on social media or through another friend. And they like, oh, Tyra, you had such and such. And you got to play it off. Oh, yeah, but it was just a couple of people. You didn't want to invite such and such. Right, right. Right. Yeah, it happens like that. You know, and, you know, but the thing is, people have to learn not to take offense from that, too. Yeah, you're right. You know, I mean, people get offended all the time by a lot of things, you know, and but at the end of the day, you know, you don't want to say guilt by association, but guess what? It is guilt by association. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So, you know, at that point, I, you know, I hope that couple was able to rectify their situation and able to, you know, talk it out and figure out what's next for them, you know, mm -hmm. but 
at the end of the day, you know. When I saw that, I said, whoa, yeah, that's not good. And she going to need to have some type of boundaries put in place. And for all we know, she got boundaries put in place, girl. He just don't. You know, some people just don't have no damn boundaries and they ignore yours. Right. Exactly. Exactly. See, it's, let me ask before we move on to the next tea with Tyra. Is yeah. that a deal breaker for you when someone ignores your boundaries? Yeah. Yeah, it is for me as well. I set boundaries and limits. And if you ignore them, that's a wrap. Yeah, I you agree. Know? Because at the end of the day, if you do it once, you'll do it again. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? My thing is you should be able to set the tone from the beginning and tell people what it is you want. You know, tell them what you want. Tell them your needs. Tell them, you know, what you're willing to accept and what you won't accept. You mm -hmm. know, and I was like, I feel like I have this conversation with people every day mm -hmm. about this. In fact, I do have this conversation every day. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. Every day. And I said, I know, you know, I know folks is like, damn, y'all don't talk about nothing else but boundaries. Hey, but boundaries are important. A lot of people don't know what they are or how to place them. It, that part. Mm -hmm. That part. That part. They don't know how to place it. They don't know how to handle them. They don't know what to do. Exactly. And they're afraid because we, we didn't grow up to learn, to know, or to know, or to know and to learn how to place boundaries. Yes. We grew up with you have to share. You be kind. And all that is true, too. But we weren't taught. You share, you be kind. But hey, hey, got to place these boundaries. Right. It was, I didn't know what boundaries was until I got grown. I mean, real grown. I understand. Look, I understand. Mm -hmm. I understand. I, look, I learned early on I'm an only child. So yeah. boundaries was always in place from the beginning. Mm -hmm. You know, I was never letting anybody, you're not going to come over here and tear up my toys and go home. Mm -hmm. You're not going to do this and go home. So I was setting boundaries with people for years, you mm -hmm. know, as a child, because I wasn't accepting the nonsense that was happening. But then I think I was a little older. I was, I think I was a little old before my time. Mm -hmm. I think I was an average kid someday. <laughs> <laughs> Being a citizen when I was five or six, I'm done. What's going on over here? <laughs> you know, like grown folk stuff or acting like a grown folk when I was a toddler. I know, right? I'm done. <laughs> Girl, I said always something, always something. It is. What do you have for us next? Oh, so the next is we want to send, you know, well wishes to Brittany Griner, who was released from the Russian prison and now home in the United States. You know, she made it home. And I tell you, when you look at social media, I tell you one thing I can say, these folks with these memes, y'all going to leave me alone with the memes. Know. You know, they some of the things they, they either going to be cruel or they going to be amusing. I seen this one meme. They had this little boy on this meme and he was singing. But you know how kids always sing to the extreme and little boy was mm -hmm. and he was like, and they was like, yeah, they was like, that's gonna be Britney Griner when the national anthem <laughs> come on. <laughs> I know that's right. I know, I know, I know, I know. So what's your take on it? How do you feel? You glad she's home? Uh, I'm glad she's home, but I think they probably could have did another, like, you know, I mean, could they have done two people? Yeah. For the one that they took, you know, for the one that we sent, you know, for the one that they sent from our country to back to Russia, could they have done two for two for one? Mm -hmm. You know, when we look at the level of the crime that she committed, she shouldn't have been stuck up over there for that. You know what I mean? But at this point, with everything going on, you know, we know all this was political. Absolutely. This was all political. And they knew what they was doing. And they didn't release our purse, the other person that's over there. You know what I mean? The gentleman, uh, Waylon, I think his last name is. They mm -hmm. didn't. They didn't release him. You know. Um, and I think you know. I don't know. I haven't read anything on his case to see how the levels of his crimes. But I'm pretty sure it was far not as far more as bad as this this guy. Whew. Exactly. Exactly. God damn! I said she didn't. She wasn't even. I said, oh my lord, she didn't do none of that. Yes. And he was like a weapons dealer and killed yeah. a lot of people responsible for so many murders. And yeah. it's getting a lot of back backlash right now. Um, uh, as far as her being home, my personal feelings, I am glad that young woman is home. 
I really mm -hmm. am because the crime the uh, did not fit the punishment. Mm -hmm. However, I have to say this. However, the crime did not fit the punishment here in the United States. We in Russia. Little Russia way. said, you don't bring no wax pen over here. It's mm -hmm. illegal over here. I don't know what y'all do over there, but you but don't you do it here. Mm -hmm. But you know what, Dr. Kansas? One thing I will say, you know, and I don't care who sees the show and like, oh, she was wrong for saying it. Half these folks, and I'm not going to blame it just on athletes. I'm going to say across the board. Yes. Anybody that hops there behind on a plane to travel places, right? Yes. 95% of the people that travel do not do research on the countries that they're traveling to. Absolutely. I bet they start they now. You see what happened to Britain. On the islands. They don't do research on that. They don't do research on none of that. They just hop their asses on planes. They go, don't know what's what, get in trouble, and then it's everybody else's problem. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And and that's a that's a big problem. During like during the end of the pandemic, it's a travel organization that I follow, Travel Goddesses. So anybody okay. who travel goddess international.com, I believe is their website. I'll give them a little shout out, right? They do a hell of a job of posting a lot of different information. So this past summer, they decided to they did a post to educate people on things they should know. That is illegal in other countries. I, oh, that is beautiful. That is so and, important. And it was so funny because I had to find a post because I was talking to a friend of mine and I'm like, girl, you know, I said, you know, I said one of the things that they was it, it came up that it was like, you know, I said, you know, some countries you can't sleep with your boyfriend. This person has to be your spouse. Right on. Well, how are they going to know? I said, I don't know. I guess based off of whatever information you give, your driver's license, you know, I said, whatever. I mean, granted, some people don't change their stuff because why? I don't know. But, you know, I said, but at the end of the day, it's things that people need to know. Yeah. You know? I said, for example, like tattoos in other countries, right? I learned from my cousins that's in Japan, right? Tattoos shouldn't be exposed. Mm-hmm. So, like, my cousin's wife, now, I don't know if it's for females or males. I know females. She told me she has to, like, when she goes to the gym, she has to cover up. Mm -hmm. And she can't expose any, no, tat, no, nothing can be exposed because it's offensive. Mm -hmm. People don't realize that. Absolutely. That's you know, right. Had she not told me that, I don't have not one tattoo, right? But had she not told me that, I would never know. Okay. And see, that's important, especially for somebody like me, because I have several. And here I am, and I lived over there for three months. Here uh -huh. I am. Here you got to cover up. You can't have that. You not not a woman right. exposed like that. You can have one, but you're not gonna be all in public like that, right? You know, yeah. it's, and it was like when she told me that, and then she was telling me some other things, you know. And I was just like, oh my gosh, like she was educating me on, you know, like I know some stuff, you know, you know about the country that I learned when I was in elementary school, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, but it was just like things that now I'm just like, oh, wow. I'm like, you know, I love learning about things that we need to know. But exactly. going back to the traveling, people need to educate themselves before they go to these places. I totally agree. I, I totally agree. I think that would be a good show for us to do. We just get up some research and dig up some things mm -hmm. and have a show about different countries, especially popular countries now that mm -hmm. everybody want to travel to because they have these sites where you can travel and pay later. You know, oh, here you go, oh, travel. Girl. So everybody traveling. Girl, everybody on a flight, you know, but then it, it, but the, at the end of the day, it's just like when you look at some of the rules, you know, like I know one of the most popular rules that used to be out years ago. Now I have to do research on them still. Um, new research was um the con you know Pakistan. Okay. Okay. So Pakistan, you know, um, rules that I learned. This is when I was in elementary school in the seventies, y'all. So I don't know if this still stands, right? Mm -hmm. But you know, one of the rules that they told us was if you stole something, the very hand that you stole it with was the very hand that got chopped off. Exactly. You know what I mean? You lie mm -hmm. your tongue go. Like, come on, like. You know, so it was things like that that I had learned. I'm like, oh my goodness. Now I don't know if that still 
if all of that still sticks. I don't know if it still exists, but it's not something that's not worthy of us educating ourselves and knowing. It's actually going over there trying to visit and stealing right. and doing stuff. Right. And that, no, don't nobody want to go to jail nowhere. Right. You know, and like I was talking to a friend about, you know, you know, we was talking about the young lady coming home or whatever. And one thing she was saying was my friend was saying, she said, Tyra, let me tell you, that pen is so small. I could see how she forgot it. I said, I said, mm -hmm. I said what? Yeah. She said, I got one and I be forgetting and mm -hmm. I be going all over for it. It's so small. She said, girl, it's so small. She said, I don't, you don't be knowing where it is. She said, so mm -hmm. nine times out of 10, she could have looked for the pen and was just like, and like anybody else, we get distracted. Yeah, she's want to go she's home and just stress. I ain't worrying about that damn pen. It just, <laughs> she said, I'm just trying to get home. She said, and, and you know, and and you look know, what happened. I said, I said, you know what? I said, you're right. I said, because that things like that happens, you know. I said, but the idea to think that they would do something like that, so you know, not because she's nine like, years that since that situation could have happened to any one of us. Absolutely. You know? And Russia, their jails are horrible because I've seen it on TV, you know, television. Yeah. And oh. nine years. That was ridiculous, you know. But you know, I'm. I, but one thing is good. I'm glad, you know, she didn't have to spend another night there, you know. And I know, you know, she better than me though. Brittany's a lot better than me because I would have left all my shit there. I don't even want my clothes. Me too. I don't. I don't want my clothes. I don't want nothing. I don't want none of it. She. She took. Look, her hair. She left that shit there too. Y'all take all of it. You leave it. I don't yeah. want. It. I'm going back home, start my new life. Take me, look, I'm going to go get my hair curled up. I'm I'm over this. I'm over all of this. I'm starting a whole brand new. Yes. I wonder, I know she's going to need mental and physical care, especially yeah. when she get over here, because I can imagine uh, what she was eating and how she was cared for. So yes. she needs to see a doctor and have a thorough physical inside and out because yes. you could just imagine sleeping conditions and different quarters she was in because yes. we have to be mindful. She's an American. Yes. We already have problems with Russia. Right. Okay. Mm. She's an American. So I can imagine even being in jail with the locals, the other local women of Russia, you know, so they like cussing her out their language. And Brittany like, what? I can imagine what she learns. Like, she don't language that. You, you know, get up, go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. Zeus, she knows. She know how to say she hungry. Right. It's time to eat. She know. She right. know what time it is in Russia. She she right. know how to. She know. It's right. just that she's going to need thorough care, love, physical support. Yes, yeah, she's going to need it. She's mm -hmm. going to need it. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if she's going to play the sport again. And I wonder how she feel about America now. Because, you know, when something happened to you, you know, we, we, we Americans and we live over here. So we like, yeah, okay, this is our country. Yeah, that's what you do. But then when something happened in your country back you, I wonder if Brittany want to join the military right now. I just wonder how she feel. Does she feel she owe mm -hmm. the United States anything? Mm, that's that's my question, question for her. Look, do you a, feel? Yeah, do question. you feel? Absolutely. I, so when she got her, her to get her on the yeah. military. Okay, because whoever I know, I know different stations, Oprah, everybody trying to offer her a million or two or well, one point five to talk to her. But and we, we had no money. money, just come on here. But we can give you some therapy or something. There you go. <laughs> we get free therapy because we just got one question. You feel you owe us anything? You know, how's, look, my, one question. How's your heart? Yeah. And how's what you feel? Do you actually feel you owe the United States anything? Because mm -hmm. we backed you when your family couldn't even get you out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We swapped you for someone that was, ooh, that he can like, he uh -huh. he, he still got money. He still got a team. He still got backing. And yeah, now he's yeah, out. Some people gave him a hug. Yes, he's out with a team and backing and money. Hug. I know, right? Because he got people, so he and still has power. Yeah, our no. people was like, let's roll. She like shit. Okay. I mean, because he still has power and backing yeah. and all of that. My thing is, uh, look, look his way. Just keep it moving because we don't, we don't want no parts of that. I know. And then my question to him, do he feel, or yeah. not that we owe him anything, but do he have any type of um, uh, kindness or gratitude towards the United States due to, if it wasn't for Brittany, we wanting her out, your ass wouldn't be out. 
So I wonder if he's looking at the big picture. Do you see it? Uh -huh. yeah. I know. I wonder if he's looking at the big picture. Because you know, if she wasn't over here and wouldn't mess up, dude, you still be there. So do you have any type of gratitude towards the United States? Or do right. you just think, oh, yeah, whatever? Right. I, I want to know. Those are those two questions. Brittany, you feel you owe us? And do, do you have any gratitude towards the United States? Right. There you go. Mm -hmm. We just got two questions. Two Hopefully three. they get answered on MSN, MSNBC or something. Hopefully somebody answered those, those two questions. Girl, yeah, you know ain't nobody asking that. Because that, that's all the questions they have. Because they don't, they, they don't get it. Because that's the big it. picture. It's a whole big picture. It's a whole big picture. But ain't nobody asking that. Yeah. I, I you, you know, but at the end of the day, hopefully we can, you know, maybe we can get some push, get some push out there so we can get, get the questions asked. Yeah, because I really want to know. Because he still will be there. That man at home with his family. And my thing is, I don't, my thing is, whatever happened, you know, with him or her, you know, and, you know, my thing is, I just hope that the media doesn't, you know, keep resurfacing up those feelings. Yes, especially for her, uh, her mental health, Jesus, I just pray that she is armored and right. she has a shield over her because the, you have, I was in, uh, watching the news and social media and other propagandas today. Mm -hmm. And some are like, that was dumb. We shouldn't have traded even what Trump stated. And I hope her cat, her team, her family is keeping her away from the news and social media because it's, it looked like it's a 50 or 70, 30 split. A lot of people did not want her out. They feel that was not a fair trade due to his, um, uh, his um, allegations. Well, right. not allegations due to his crime. Sorry, it wasn't allegations. Look, that was ain't crap. No allegations. He did. Yeah, it. Ain't no allegations. That was the wrong word, child. He did it. So due to his crime, yeah. so a lot of people felt that wasn't no fair trade. So mm -hmm. I don't want her to go into and we can say this on the mental health minute. Being therapists mm -hmm. have suicidal ID suicidal ideation behind this. Right. Mm -hmm. Do you feel what I'm putting down? Because. Yeah. If yeah. she go on social media, so many people, even Trump said it. That was a dumb move. We never should have did it for her. Wow. And to hear that, yeah. hopefully she yeah. is protected yeah. and not able to hear that. Take right. her phone. So this is to Britney's family. Take her phone. Actually, she ain't got no phone. Russia already took that. Don't get her no phone. She don't need no, no. You know folks don't went and got her one on the way home. Mm -mm. She don't need no phone. We gotta, phone. we gotta get her this. You know they was out getting it. So it's mm -mm. like, as we say no, no, no. We know mm -mm. the deal was already done. They done went and got mm -mm. all her stuff. She need an American shower, some good food, Piece of and wife. get in a good bed with some good down pillows and a nice weighted blanket and, and maybe nice ocean sounds in the back, mm -hmm. like a sound machine, and let this girl go and sleep. Yes. And then wake up and eat a good breakfast. Talk to somebody, get some hugs, and that's it. She don't need no TV and she don't need no phone, but she needs some oh, good clean she, water. There, she probably she probably ain't go to sleep, but she needs some good clean water and a and a sleeping pill. But you know she probably ain't going to sleep no time soon. Yeah. Cause, How cause somebody get a sleeping pill? You know because of the whole reality. Like I'm here. She's in shock. I can only imagine her plane ride home. I know. I know she in shock, and her body is overactive. So give her a sleeping pill, a shower. So say like, take this pill. It's gonna kick in. Be mm -hmm. her go get in the shower, get a nice clean shower, basketball yeah. shorts on, t shirt, go to bed, and mm -hmm. give her a good meal. Give us some Popeye's chicken. Boy, she had thought I would eat right quick. Oh, it's just a Popeye's chicken. <laughs> <laughs> it's American. I'm just trying to make you right you, you all. Popeye's chicken. You're talking about emotional and eating and physical eating. <laughs> Because it's comfort, even though I'm vegetarian, but it's comfort now. Give us a Popeye's chicken and a warm blanket and a shower and a sleeping pill. Who ate Popeye's chicken? Look I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> she was thought out. Girl, a shower, Popeye's chicken, and a sleeping pill. Tell me she won't be living her best life. There you go. Yeah. And have her knock her out. No, don't take half the pill. Take the whole pill. Let her sleep for 16 hours. Then wake up. We can talk about it. Then go back to bed. Oh, yeah. we ain't got to talk about it if you don't want to. We're going to talk about everything. We gotta talk about Let me tell you what you missed. <laughs> yes. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be a whole But Look, the number one story she probably talked about, they probably going to say, girl, we can talk about that later. We're going to take your mind off of that. Let me tell you about the big dummy that was running for <laughs> senator. Yes. Georgia. yes. Let's talk about him. I know. <laughs> she is so much. That. You know, there you go. A werewolf and a vampire. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Girl, it's so much that we could talk about with her to take her mind yeah. off things. Yeah. Like, you know, look, she done missed so much stuff. Look, she, she missed a whole lot of shit to talk about. Yes. 
Absolutely. <laughs> take her man off. Just give us some good food, some good comfort food. And that's what we're talking about today. That's yeah. absolutely. Right, well, this was a good segue. <laughs> Um, welcome home, Brittany. This is our segue into our topic of the day, emotional eating versus physical eating. Look, Absolutely. I'm afraid to hit one of these damn buttons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, I am excited. I am very excited to be here to talk about uh, the emotional. Are, are we there? Yep, we're there. Yes. It is emotional hunger versus physical hunger. A lot of people don't know what that is, you know, a lot, but a lot of people can relate. So I'm going to talk about what would it look like, what it is and what it isn't. First of all, I'm going to give you, I'm going to start in the segment of give you the difference, emotional hunger versus physical hunger. Now with emotional hunger, I'm pretty sure a lot of people can relate. And I don't know if my audience may know this as well, or you too, Dr. T, men suffer from this as well. So with the emotional hunger, it starts suddenly. Now, the difference between physical hunger, hunger, it starts gradually. Your body has a routine. Your body has a clock. Your body has a hunger clock and your body also have a um, sleep clock and emotional clock and all of that. But for the sake of this broadcast, we're just going to talk about hunger. So with your hunger cart, a clock when it starts gradually you become hungry at a certain time and your body just know so that's like that every day now with like i stated with emotional hunger it starts suddenly also you feel mostly in your head and different thoughts start, start to surface up so you that's where the emotional hunger come from when you're battling with something whether you're sad you're depressed you're anxious you whatever you're going through we always want to geared towards comfort. And what is comfort for us, especially during these winter and fall months? Food. Now, with the physical, you start to feel physically hunger. That's having hunger pains, maybe a slight little headache. So that is the difference between emotional. Emotional, you feel it here in your head and in a thought. So you have an emotion attached to it. Physical, you feel it like, oh, I got a slight little headache. I feel a little wheezy. You start to shake a little bit. I'm pretty sure you can uh, attest to this, Dr. Tyra. You ever been so hungry, you start shaking and you feel weak? There you go. That's physical hunger. Emotional hunger comes with the sadness and in your mind. Another thing, you have sharp cravings towards something that is sweet and, and, and very crunchy or sweet and salty. That is an emotional and people may think, well, I always crave that. That's an emotional. It becomes a habit. With your physical, your stomach is growling. Remember I said that. Another one. This is versus, okay? With the emotional, you crave specific foods. With just hunger, you like, I just need something to settle on my stomach. Do you see the difference? Emotional. I want chicken, potatoes, and this and that. You want the comfort. With physical, you're like, ah, oh, I just want something in my stomach. I, I want what I want. I like what I like. But you just want something on your stomach. So those are the difference. And then another with emotional is you're not, you're eating, but you're not hungry. You ever just ate, you ever had going through something, whether you're sad, depressed, anxious, whatever you may go through, it could be some type of stress. So you're eating and then you have your leftovers and you'll go back to it because it didn't get a chance to leftover. You get what I'm saying? You ever went up leftovers, but it didn't actually become leftover. It become put to the side for five minutes. That's it. There you go. That's emotionally eating. You're not eating to be you know, I'm comfortable. I'm good. I'm associated. I'm good. That's what that means. So those are the difference. And another, the last difference between emotional hunger and physical hunger with emotional, you're triggered. Emotional have triggers. Physical hunger, there ain't no damn trigger. You got to eat to live and live to eat. That's what you do. In order to be here, we have to have substance. We have to have mental substance, physical substance, the food we put in our bodies, we have to have that. So that is the difference between emotional hunger and physical hunger. And what I want everyone to take away from this broadcast today, again, emotional hunger is trigger, feeling of guilt, self-loathing, regret, shame, hurt, pain. It comes with all of that. Physical hunger is I have to eat. I'm getting weak. 
I'm getting a headache. I know I'm going to go out here and work. So I got to put my, I got to put something in my stomach. You ever had a situation, Dr. Tyrone? I'm pretty sure you have. We all have. Where you're like, oh, I'm going to do this today. Let me put something in my stomach. I don't want to be hungry. Right. You ever said yeah, that? I have. Oh, yeah, yeah. definitely. I've yeah, I got to put something in my times. stomach. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got to put something in my stomach because I know I'm going to be there for such and such hours. So let me eat now. So that's right. preparing. That's how we should eat. So that's the right way instead of eating because we in our feelings. So that is the difference, everyone, between emotional and physical hunger. Now, let me give you some of the signs uh, that indicate you may be emotionally eating because a lot of us do that. I'm going to tell y'all, I was a big emotional eater. Every time something happened, I go straight to food. That was my go-to. And food is the number one addiction in America. Mm-hmm. We have food it have food addiction is higher than drug addiction. Did mm-hmm. you know that? Yeah, mm-hmm. food addiction. So here are some of the signs. You eat when you are stressed. I don't do that anymore. You eat when you are stressed. You eat as a response to your emotions. A lot of us, if I, if you feel a certain way, whether it be sad, you can, your emotions can be happy and you feel you deserve a piece of cake. I want the piece of cake too, but we eat when you feel sad, happy, any type of emotion, you gear it toward food. Mm-hmm. You soak in silence with food. Mm-hmm. You hide food. You have trouble losing weight due to the way you eat. You eating, your eating is out of control and you cannot stop eating because you're emotional or you caught up or you're in a battle with yourself or someone else. Mm -hmm. It is a comfort for you. You eat to feel happy. That was me. That was me. I I can admit all of this. You eat when you feel happy. Girl, I was eating when I feel happy, sad, anxious, whatever. I just felt, ooh, I could celebrate and I want to celebrate with food. Now I change my way of thinking and my habits and now I incorporate wellness and exercise. You are fascinated with eating food. Yeah, I still do that. I admit to that. I still do that to this day. When I have food, I dance. I'm in my seat and I'm wiggling because I got something to eat. There you go. I still do that. So you eat that way. You use you use emotionally charged words to describe your food. This is when this is again. I am describing emotionally eating. If you have this habit, you eat even when you are full. I used to do that. Have you ever did that, Doctor Diamond? Ate when you're full. I did. I did that years ago and yeah. I stopped. And I had a friend one time that she used to eat till she was full and then she would belch and be like, yeah. okay, I'm good now. And I'd be yeah. like, girl. Yeah. And and I, think, to, I was like, that's too eating. much. Mm. Yeah, that's emotionally eating. That's mm. when someone's emotionally eating. You think of eating even when you are full. Mm-hmm. Because that's your go-to for everything. That's a coping mm-hmm. mechanism. I right. want everybody to understand and realize that it's a coping mechanism, and mm-hmm. it is something. It's a habit and a mm-hmm. coping mechanism. However, it can you can overcome it. Also, mm-hmm. you have random food cravings out of the blue: craving sugar, salt, something sweet, something mm-hmm. crunchy. That's when you know mm-hmm. you are an emotional eater. And we all have been, I'm pretty sure, not all, I don't want to generalize everyone, but Mm -hmm. most of us either know someone that have this habit or are doing this habit now. So before I go on into how we can overcome this, Dr. Tyro, do you, uh, have you ever had to counsel someone or know someone that has emotionally eaten or, and has stopped? Well, what I'll, yeah, well, what I'll say about that is, you know, this time of year, Right. We are in the holiday season and a lot of people do a lot of emotional eating during this time um, to cope for grief, um, to overcome uh, feeling overwhelmed with different situations that be, that might be occurring in their life. So, you know, when it comes to emotional eating versus a physical eating is like, you know, we do a lot of, uh, of seminars on seasonal depression to try to talk to people about healthier ways to eat. You know, so whether than going to those chips and going through those cookies, going and grabbing, you know, fruits and vegetables and things like that, that will give you the proper nourishment that you need every day. So that if you are emotionally eating, at least you're emotionally eating in a healthier manner opposed to a non-healthy manner, you know, because it's easy, you know, you know, eat food is a coping skill, right? At least people use food as a coping skill. Should it be a coping skill? Uh, in my opinion, absolutely not. Because when you eat, you know, when we eat out, of, you know, uncontrollably, 
you know, it is a form of gluttony that causes a lot of weight gain and things like that. And, you know, and which causes a lot number of health issues. And the thing is, we want everybody to be as physically healthy as possible. You know, I think about that statement, you know, as Dr. Candace was talking about emotional eating versus physical eating, you know, eat to live, don't live to eat. You know, and that's like one of the number one statements that you hear a lot of individuals make when it comes to nutrition. That's like one of the number number one nutritional sentences that you will hear everyone make. So if you don't take anything from this live today, eat to live, don't live to eat. Absolutely. I totally agree with you. And you're absolutely right when you said that a lot of people did you, you're consuming and it's gluttony and eating so much and not watching what you eat. It, it has a lot to do with, we talk about this as well, a lot on Mental Health Minute is self-care. What see, we ignore what we put in our body. We just consuming everything, everything and taking in unhealthy foods and process and and snacks and chicken and all of that. I get it. Fried and fried and fried food. I get all of that. And those things do taste good. However, at some point we have to watch what we eat in order to be where we want to be. You have to watch what you put in your body because it can cause so many health issues. And once I learned that, it changed my life because I used to be one of those two that put everything in your body and just eating everything because I'm like, oh, you only live and, and I'm just going to eat what I want. Mm, no, because as soon as something is wrong and a that, that's where it comes from. It comes from what we consume mentally and physically. That's where disease come from and inflammation. So we have to watch what we eat and take care of ourselves and be more uh, alive and more up on our mental wellness and physical wellness. You know, we have to, we have to and take care of ourselves. And it has nothing. And people always look at the weight. I want to say being a clinician myself, being a doctor, it has nothing to do with weight. Just because you got weight on you don't mean you're unhealthy. And just because you skinny don't mean you healthy. People need to stop thinking that it has nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with it. Now, uh, when you have some that's malnourished and some that's overweight. However, it's what you are consuming. That's what we're talking about today. So I'm going to give you a couple of tips on overcoming emotional eating, some things you can do. One, you can take note of what you're eating. Take note of what you're eating. That's number one. And we take note of what you're eating what you're consuming and why. So one and two kind of go together. Let's get to the root. Why? Why are you overeating? If that's a defense mechanism for you, we're going to have to find something else for you. You have to replace that. I would not tell you to just stop cold turkey and that's just what it is. Just stop, put it down. No, if I take something from you, I need to give you something to replace that. That is how the brain works. The brain is not going to work. And that's how we work as humans anyway. You're not going to take my car and don't give me nothing to drive. How am I going to get that? So you can't take my food and what I'm going to do, sir? So we have to replace it with something. But the first thing we're going to do is take note. Why are you eating like you're eating? What, what's the emotional connection to this food? Is it something that you were learned, that was something you were taught? Is it something that you're going through? Is there some type of pain, hurt, grief? Is it, what is going on? Is there a reason why you're doing what you're doing? So we need to find the fact and find the reason. Take note, okay? Number two, we need to write down. I think journaling and writing down your what's going on with you and your thoughts and the things that you eat and the things that you crave. But number one was replacing. Number two was toss temptation. I mean, number three, toss temptation. If it ain't in the house, you can't eat it. Out of sight, out of mind. Now, I don't advise y'all to quit cold turkey. I'm not that type of doctor to say don't batter chips. I believe in this. I'm like, I turn a honey, eat the cake out of May. However, however, you get it, you don't batter a whole cake. Y'all can go to any grocery stores. They sell a slice of cake. Buy one. There you go. You don't have to buy a whole damn cheesecake. Buy a slice. There you go. Eat that. You know how everybody like M&M's, peanut M&M's. Don't buy the big bag. Buy the small bag when you're in the grocery store. And you know how you're in the aisle at the grocery store at the cashier? They got the little small bag. There you go. You buy in moderation and out of sight, out of mind. Because here's the trick into buying what you crave for at that minute. If you buy one and you buy a small bag and you sit at home and you craving it and it's cold outside, it was nighttime, you're not going to get up and go get it. 
out of sight, out of mind. And what you're doing, you're disciplining your brain not to want those things. And if you have something else in the house, such as bananas or uh, strawberries and blueberries and healthy things with natural sweetness, you're like, well, I can eat this. Drink some water and go to bed. Who mama? I was raised like that. That's number four. Drinking water, plenty of water. Because what water does, water tricks your mind into thinking you're full. So stay hydrated. There you go. Everybody was raised with this, especially us Gen Xers. Drink some water and go to bed. There you go. So you can do that. So that's number four. Number five is you need to distract yourself because again, overeating and emotional eating is a coping mechanism. So you have to replace that with something. So whether it be painting, hanging out with friends, uh, going for a walk, exercising, drawing, j- jumping on a live, watching something, whatever it may be, distract yourself. Okay. The next one is you got to plan the snack. This is my favorite. Plan your snacks. Reward yourself. I love that one. I have given it to so many patients. So a lot of people like, oh, Dr. C, I just love my sweets. You got to earn your sweets. Sweets for the sweets. Earn it. So you have to do something for yourself. Whether you walk three days a week, you like, yeah, I'm going to walk Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And on Friday, I'm going to have a small bag of chips or I'm going to have that slice of cake. Earn it. So we could do that. So that, that's just a couple of um, things I want to give you today. And another one I want to give you today of how we can overcome. This is very important. I need everyone to listen to this. Learn how to recognize the difference between hunger and emotional, physical hunger and emotional hunger. You need to learn how to recognize the difference. If you are in a certain mood or you're going through something and you decide Oh, I just feel like I want that. I feel like I want this hot chocolate or I want this candy bar. You know that's emotional eating because you know damn well before you got that feeling, you weren't thinking about that candy bar. So you got to learn how to identify. Is, is this real hunger? Because if this real hunger, I'm going to go on and I'm going to eat something healthy or I'm going to eat something else. Or is this emotional hunger? So that is number one for that. Learn how to recognize. Remember, I like to keep a journal and I ain't saying you got to write a book about it, but I need you to bullet point and figure out why you're eating, how you're eating and keep a journal. And I don't want to say track your food because I think that's too time consuming and becomes very tacky and time consuming. So you can do this. Write down why you're eating what you're eating and how do you feel? Do you uh, do y'all get what I'm saying? How I feel when I eat healthy and how I feel when I binge on emotionally eating. That's what I want you to do. Because again, tracking your food can be time consuming and it can get tacky and you can become very angry with that. Because now you're like, okay, I ain't lost no damn weight. I still feel like crap. This ain't helping me. But if you write it and track it in the way that I'm saying, because when you eat healthy foods, it makes us feel a certain way. When you eat processed and unhealthy things, it makes us feel a certain way. So if you feel good, you will gravitate towards that more. Okay. Then I need y'all, everybody, get a support system. Get an accountability partner. Be like, okay, this is what we're going to do because we both have this issue. Or you could join a group of emotional eaters. There's nothing wrong with that. When there's a mass of people that builds you up, it's power in a group. Not saying you don't have power alone, but you got more power in a group. So get a support system. Then I need you to have other interests. Remember, I talked about distracting yourself. Distract yourself. Get other interests. Find you something else to do besides eating. And that's where self-care come in. Self-care, self-care, self-care. Show yourself some compassion and learn how to say, okay, this isn't good for me. And I need to ask yourself, how do you want to live? That's number one. How do you want to live? Do you want to live here healthy and whole? And it has nothing to do with size. Size doesn't matter. I need y'all to know that. And this is coming from a doctor. Size doesn't matter. People think because you in a size 16 and that one over there in a size two, she healthier. That has nothing to do with it. Has nothing to do with it. What I'm saying is how you feel in the inside and numbers matter because I see people of different sizes every day. You got somebody in the size 16, her blood pressure is better than the one in the size two. So the numbers is what matters, okay? So I want everyone to watch this broadcast Ask yourself, how do I want to live? How do I want to feel? And how do I want to live? When you ask yourself those two questions, that you will start to take control of the emotional eating. So those are my tips for today. So what do you think, Dr. T? How do you feel about that?
I look, this was an awesome show. You know, I feel like, you know, that was something that was needed to talk about, you know, especially this time of year, you know, because we know with all the holiday parties and things that's happening, there's a lot of people that's going to be doing, you know, yes. a little bit more snacking than normal. You know, I'm, I'm adding myself into it also because I know, you know, and it's just being able to say, okay, I'm going to take a step back and start moving away from X, Y, and Z so that I can, you know, be healthier. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. That's right. I have one more tip before we let everybody go. This tip that I give to so many patients because everybody wants to get fit starting in January, end of January, going into February. Let me tell you, especially my ladies, y'all doing it wrong. You get fit now. You're supposed to start getting fit in October. So what you do since October is gone and November is gone, start it now. And then in the summer, you like, I can coast. Yeah, everybody has it wrong. Everybody like, I got to get my summer body. You don't get your summer body in the damn summer. You get your summer body in the winter. That's how you do it. Any doctor would tell you that. You start right. on your health and wellness in the winter. We gain, I'm y'all know some of us like bears, honey. I know I'm a cute little bear. I gain more weight and I have the winter. So you gain, so you start on all your summer body and your summer thinking and your summer brain in the winter you want to do all the amazing mental health and physical wellness things in right now start it now in december december 9th start it right now and keep going and going girl about time september hit not september but maybe june may and june you good that's how you do that you don't start in the summer you start right now so you can enjoy your summer because the ones that start in the summer they always fall off why because they missing out they're not enjoying their summer they too busy trying to oh i gotta do this and i gotta work out and i gotta be healthy and i gotta do this let it become a lifestyle not something that you're doing for the summer body or to wear a bikini or go on a vacation do it as a lifestyle but i suggest and i'm telling you it will work start now so that way you can enjoy your life and enjoy the summer. That is what we have for you today on the Mental Health Minute. Yep, that I, was my last word. <laughs> yeah, look, I love it. That was awesome because I totally agree. You yes. Know, yeah, my last word, live to eat, not eat to live. Right on. Or that eat was to it. live, not live to eat. Yeah, eat to there live, you, not live to eat. Look, there you go. I, said, I know that's right. You know, we always <laughs> saying that one backwards. <laughs> I love it. Yes, this was an awesome show. This really was. It this really was. was. We want to thank everybody for tuning in today and watching the show with us. You know, definitely, you know, watch our replay. For those who wasn't on, make sure to watch the replay. We want to yes. wish you all a happy week. We will see all of you back on the 23rd of December. Absolutely. We will be talking about, oh my goodness, holiday stress. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, well, so we we'll see y'all then, and thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you. <laughs> yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, we're gonna try to exit this time. <laughs>